We uh, <coughs> call this meeting to order at about 6.03. And first order of business is to review and approve the minutes from our last meeting of January 8th. So there are 12 warrants presented for signature, totaling $179,782.81. Uh, I sent out the general fund and school choice reports ahead of time. Everything looks to be on track to meet budget. Uh, nothing major to report at this time, but I did want to just let you know that I'm keeping an eye on the central office expenditures. You'll see that there is a warrant in there to pay the first half of the year for the shared cost for anything central office related. What I'm discovering is that there are lines that exist at Frontier that may not necessarily exist at the elementary school, so that could be problematic for us, although I don't think it's anything significant at this point um, that we need to be looking at. I just wanted you to know that I was watching it. I'm happy to take questions if anyone has questions. Anybody have any questions? Maybe on budget stuff later? Yes. All right. So, not to rush things, but I want to move right along. For sure. <laughs> why not? Uh, any public uh, comment this evening? Yes. Hello. Um, I'm Julie Fallon, and yep. I was asked to share that um, you probably noticed there are far fewer red, red shirts here tonight than there were last time. <laughs> um, 25 of our colleagues at the elementary level are attending the SEI course, and that'll be going on for 12 weeks. I believe it's three hours a session in the evenings. Um, so they <coughs> didn't want to be here, so I just wanted to pass that along. So thank you. Can you just you. Um, tell, tell me what the acronym is, sorry. Sheltered English Immersion. Okay. It's the mandatory, man, state mandated mm -hmm. requirement for teachers now. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, update on capital requests. Is that um, principal or superintendent? Because I don't see our. <coughs> no, so those are. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> My things? So basically, Ken has brought them forward to the capital committee. Yes. Yeah. It's just kind of he's, for him to give us an update where those are at and since he's not here. Okay. Ken, yes. All I know is that they, they're discussing them. Did we? You were a late scratch. Is there a list of them? Uh, do you think we were going to get them up? Yeah, and I, get, I submit them all to him and he yeah, sent them to the. Uh, I was just trying to think if I could answer anything that was at the meeting last night for a bit of time. We discussed really the main thing we discussed was the generator um, <laughs> that I talked about. I think the rest of the stuff was. Pretty straightforward with the bathrooms, flooring. <clears throat> so we submitted four. Yep. The building generator, the restrooms, the classroom floors. In the courtyard repair was more about getting it on their radar because yes. we applied for a grant that will require money probably next year, but right we wanted to just have not surprise them that that was coming. Yep. So Perfect. Go to the floor. <clears throat> they had asked me to find out about the Generator, which we've done already, and we've talked, so I'll report back that information. Okay, so. okay any questions on that topic? No? Okay. Moving right along to further discussion on uh, next year's proposed budget. So I emailed a bunch of documents ahead of time. You have a narrative summary. You have a line-by-line -line summary, which looks similar. There's two pages. It looks similar to what we reviewed last time. Mm -hmm. And then we have a school choice analysis. So we're going to go over all those pieces. <coughs> um, I'm going to start with the narrative and just kind of read through. Thank you. Talk too quickly. Just ask me to stop or if you have a question while I'm moving along. Um, so we are at 2.68% uh, with the second draft budget, or $129,000 increase. 
Um, that is down from our last meeting. Now, if you remember, um, we did make some changes prior to the last meeting, and one of my formulas was wrong, so the percentage at that time was 3.31. Um, we did massage the numbers quite a bit and got that down to 2.68 after I went ahead and corrected the issue with the spreadsheet. Um, so we're down about 30,000 from last time that we spoke. Okay. Um, I do want to address a question that David had um, through email that came in to me a little after five today. So if you look at the bottom, the last line of this summary mm -hmm. on the top paragraph, um, it does mention that the overall operating budget of the school is down. Um, and I think that that brings up a lot of questions for people, so I'm happy to take them if I don't answer them now. Um, but we are looking at a potential programmatic change in the early childhood program. Um, we have a retiring teacher, and there are some spatial issues within the school that Tina has expressed a need to um, reduce the number of early childhood classrooms down from three to two, um, which would change some staffing, which is why the budget overall is down. Now, we don't see that on the general fund because a good portion of that came from early childhood separate funding on its own. Um, but as a whole, when we add up all of our funding sources, we are down a little bit in that line, just not to the general fund. Does that make sense to everyone before mm -hmm. I move on? It makes sense. Can I just ask a little question about that? So are we doing, um, are we increasing the class size of the remaining classes? And are we doing this because of reduced demand? And or are we going to be turning people away now because we only have two classes instead of three? Mm -hmm. Sorry, you do you feel like you can speak to those pieces or? Sorry, I should look over there. Yep. Um, class sizes will say about the same. We're going up to about 15. 15 is our max uh, for that. The need we uh, preschool is to provide services to the students that need special education and we pair them one to one typically is kind of the ratio for that. And so the need is really down. A couple years ago, I think it was 2014, don't correct me, uh, don't quote me on that one, but there was a big shift and an increase, so we went from two to three, and now we're seeing the numbers drop for, uh, for the services that are needed. So if somebody moves to town and wants to go to preschool here, they'll be able to? Not always. No, we have, uh, you know, they, there's a wait list, but they might be able to get into one of our new and new schools. The number of applications that we currently have for next year, now while that's always changing, we did look at the current number of applicants and the returning students, and at this point, we're not turning anyone away. There are still spaces available. That's true at this point, and with the applications, it's a tricky, it's a fluid process too, uh, but with the applications, just because they apply doesn't mean they're actually gonna come. Right. So we can't actually hang our hat that we have 14 applications, we're gonna have 14 students either. So it's, it, it really is a fluid, uh, fluid process and a moving target at all times. <laughs> um, and with the numbers that we have right now, this makes the most sense for us to move to two um, for classrooms. Next, for, for next year, year at this time. Are you, um, are you running out of space, period, in the building? We do have a space. Uh, we are tight. We really enjoy each other's company. So we work really well together. <laughs> I know that, but uh, if you had another room, would you still we, be looking we, at doing the reduction. Yes, we will still be looking at the reduction just based on the number of student needs right mm -hmm. now. The, re the reduction isn't, isn't just not. for space. Right. If it was, we it's probably would have done this a couple of years ago. Right, right. <laughs> um, this, this space issue isn't new to this year. Right. Yeah. And I know there's, yeah, there's always a push for like, you know, uh, making sure enough, as many kids as possible do early education. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that we, <coughs> okay. I mean, it's that it's that interesting philosophy, though. It is. Because I mean, you're talking about I talked with some superintendents in Eastern Mass, and they're talking about universal preschool, right. free to all. Right. You know, um, that's not how we have things set up in the city. It isn't now. And you know, a large number of our preschoolers don't come to Deerfield first. They choose other programs or yeah. or not. Right. And so, obviously, our obligation is for those who have have needs who show or get screened for needs early on yeah. and obviously we try to pair them with, with those um, with uh, peers yeah. so that's one of those things so Until it is so we there. talked about this right. you know kind of thing is like you know you start reducing the number that can come in right away you know I mean right now the, the way enrollment would look you're talking about some very small classes mm -hmm. if we did move forward so 
the balancing the economics versus whatever. But sure. I, I am seeing it because I'm seeing, I'm seeing heads kind of thing like you know you're reducing the number that can start here is absolutely a fact. You know, someone will show up if we fill this up in mid time next year. You know, someone does move in or becomes of age to attend preschool. We're going to say that it's full. You're going to have to look elsewhere. Mm. Okay. Anything else before I move on? No. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read through the uh, expenditures. Some of these are repeat from last time. We didn't just add all of these since the last meeting, but I, I'm going to reiterate them here. So teacher mentor stipends for mentors and grade leaders. This was uh, an addition of 7,200 to the above budget. This was on the first draft. These uh, stipends were previously paid from a REAP grant. Um, we want to get them on the local budget because they are an annual recurring expense and the grant is somewhat um, unpredictable. Uh, teacher salaries. So I want to explain a little bit here that the teacher salary increase that I'm offering to you now is overall across the whole school, not a hit directly <coughs> to the general fund budget because some of our teachers are paid from other funding sources. So we anticipate that based on a potential contract settlement, there would be an increase of 3.9% for our teachers collectively for 110,000. Um, the net change to the general fund is less. Uh, we do have retirements happening and then um, our potential new hire for the kindergarten classroom could be at a lower step. So the net change, if you look on this line by line page, mm -hmm. um, you'll see here that the net change in the function code that starts 2305 is only 44,000 versus the 110 for the overall increase. Um, mm -hmm. But we do fund those you know, the remaining, the difference from other sources. Um, similar to that, the IA salary increase, IAs are also funded from several funding sources, so there's not necessarily an increase to the general fund of 26,000, but the IA increase is a 3.6% overall based on their settled contract. Uh, we increased teacher and IA professional development. Uh, last time we spoke, this number was up quite significantly. Uh, this was one of the items that we did reduce down uh, based on the need to drop our percentage overall. Um, we had asked for about 10,000 and we're increasing this only by two this time around. We did increase summer salaries uh, in the last budget. That's not a change here. That's a $6,000 increase based on expenditures from the prior three years. Textbooks, uh, similar increase with the first draft of the budget by 1700 to cover items previously paid from a grant. Nature's Classroom also was included in the first draft of the budget, an increase of 2950. Uh, SPED contracted services, we added $7,000 to cover consultation fees for special needs students. That was also added in the first draft. And same with transportation, that is not new to this draft. That was included in the last for um, almost a $17,000 based on needs of our students. And security, same, this was included in the first draft of the budget for a $1,500 increase to cover any potential unforeseen maintenance issues that come with the new PFOB system. And then we have a wage increase and adjustments for non-union personnel. So this is administration, central office staff, <coughs> secretaries, principals, et cetera. This increase is 34,800. I do want to highlight that this is not all wage increases. Um, it's partially due because of the cost share going up with Deerfield's enrollment being different than last year. It also accounts for a $3,000 increase in summer custodial support. We also had a secretarial position that was previously paid from school choice and we're moving that onto the general fund for next year. Any questions about that before I do? Um, last time we met, we had uh, said that we were looking for funds to support a new CODA, uh, a point six position. Um, we are looking to fund that by school choice. And then the expenditures here on the bottom are some changes that I made since the last meeting, um, some are since the last meeting and some were included in the first draft. So utilities, uh, I cannot figure out why utilities have been inflated so much over the years in Deerfield, but I did look at the actual electric bills from the last three years and they seem to be incredibly over budgeted in that line. So I was able to bring that down about 18,000. We were grouped in with, um, I remember a couple years back we were talking about uh, Springfield was 
we were kind of all grouped in and Springfield was involved with the buying and then they backed out and that really jacked our price up quite a bit. So maybe there's been some negotiation yeah. since then and it's come down, but I think that was one of the reasons why it went way up. And I did look at like the most recent bills are obviously the highest sure. with it being winter um, yep. and we're not even spending 5,000 a month and we had almost double that budgeted. Okay. So, well, that's um, good. That allowed us to bring yeah. that expense down. Maybe some of the green communities grant improvements we've had here have been paying off. So. Great. Good. Uh, last draft, we talked about the employee separation cost reduction. We do have an increase in uh, retirement payouts for next fiscal year. Uh, we also talked about this last time that we, we removed the $5,000 that was in custodial contract services. The funds have not necessarily been used for that in the prior years, so that helped bring the budget number down. And the other major change uh, that we have since the first draft is to remove um, the 0.4 FTE psychologists that we were looking to build into the budget. So that also helped reduce our number in the end. I know it's a lot of information, so mm. I'll wait for your comments and questions. Is the, is the new hire, is that removed for budget reasons? Yes. Or Originally, because we have a social emotional program, and the students in that program require a high level of service that is, um, we would better be able to serve if we had a part time school psychologist in a, in a quota to meet those needs. Um, these, these are the students that are at risk of being um, tuitioned out at about an average of $70,000 a student. So we're really trying to build our program. And to have both of those, I think we would have a stronger program, but to keep the budget coming in at like a 2.6 or 3.0. What would the budget be with that? I don't know. Um, so if it was a part-time <coughs> position, you know, we could be looking at a 1% increase or close to a 1% increase. Mm -hmm. And is that adding to somebody who's already here, just giving them more time here, or is that just bringing somebody new in to point it, four? It would be bringing somebody new on. I'll think about that one a bit. Yeah. It just that. seems like it's one of those things that you've raised <coughs> every year. increasing concern about. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And it impacts everybody. It really does. Classrooms. I think the services are across the building. We have a uh, Maybe Great. teachers, if you look over, will be shaking their heads. <laughs> yes, along with our school psychologists that are sitting here. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're taxed. Right. Well, then the other thing, you know, um, this, this is uh, some it's petty, it's small stuff, but I think of stuff that, you know, I noticed we're moving things on that were previously paid by a grant. So I wonder how often that happens where we get a grant we get used to something and then the grant goes away and we have to continue to fund it. And so that happens, I guess, the 70 in our bucks is pitifully small amount of money. But I wonder how many times that happens over the course of five or 10 years and you wind up with large amount. I mean, it's not all that's I'm important. Not. We need it to educate right. our kids and the needs change and all that stuff, but I wonder. So I mean, the REAP grants are federal grants. And so that's gonna be dependent on Put it this way, depending on the administration. Man, man, I mean, man, those kind of go so go, you'll get some, you'll uh, uh, pick things up and you put things onto the grant. Yep. And then, then you the, the, the reprint has slowly gotten smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, so, well, different one which is different than some other kind of times you get grants and, you know, we talk about whether or not you, know, you put a position in place and they, we know the grant's going to go away in three years. Right. But in this particular one, we're talking about the reprint, which yeah. is a federal funding grant. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Definitely want to think about that last one for a while. Appreciate that. So I think it's important because you're going to, she's going to go into the next part to talk about how, why this is lower because we're using more school choice than we ever have in the past. And Correct. so can we talk about that? Okay. It's kind of a, mm -hmm. from a revenue standpoint, yep. it's been adjusted because we're overspending what we're taking in. So yes. Jumping right to yeah. the end of that. Yeah. Sure. So uh, our school choice funds for next year are looking to be down about $100,000. Mm. Um, so that's something that we had to take into consideration when building this budget. Um, and that's also part of the reason that that position was removed because we knew that we needed to help offset some of those things. So um, after some conversation, we met with Ken ahead of time and reviewed with Tina and Darius. 
Um, what we're looking to present for school choice use is essentially using what we took in last year, which is more than what we're going to take in next year. Mm -hmm. um, so FY20, we took about 450,000 in, and FY21, we're looking at taking in 350,000. Can you just stop right there and just yep. explain that change? That's um, there has been a change in student enrollment through school choice, so it's my understanding that we left. lost <laughs> lot of um, 20 left. students, but we only replaced 10 of them. So that would be a 50,000. That would be spending <laughs> over many yeah. years. Yeah. So spending from is any services we provide to a choice, a choice student on top of the $5,000. So if they're part of a, it could be one or two students or it could be a, a bunch of yeah. smaller amounts of students receiving additional services. So, so that's the important part here because you look at that number and the number is actually, you know, we're actually spending more school choice money than we're getting in. We're going to go into the reserves. And that was the reason why we cut the other position was that to do both. Um, is going to increase the budget and um, decrease our revenue coming in that's trying to offset that budget. So mm -hmm. it kind of spirals us faster. And that was the that was the concern. And we have a healthy school choice balance. Yeah. Um, but if you know if, if we need to teachers. spend four hundred and thirty every year and we're only bringing in three hundred and fifty, our balance is not going to last very long. So and I know we made a conscious effort four years ago now maybe um, yeah. to you know, reduce that one class mm -hmm. but that trend never really took off um, we never really started to see the you know reductions in every every conference you go to and every you know every meeting I go to with the state and everybody else not just the school committee but select board or you know, dwindling population but it really hasn't come to be. And so. this time every year we get a little nervous, oh, our kindergarten numbers are low, but and by the boom. time it's, yep, summer hits and we're registered for kindergarten numbers. But we, we, in the region, we've, we've escaped that because our right. neighbors are seeing significant reductions and then we've been able to offset to, you know, Frontier in the Union Theory District has, is, is, is winning the school choice, right. you know, battle with our neighbors yeah. in the sense of that not only they're losing population, but we're taking the extra percentage to offset our population loss. Right. And so, you know, I, I don't know when that trickle down is going to occur. You know, maybe point. it won't. Maybe there'll be right. a reinsertion of the, the economy in the area and people will move in and, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. But we have people talking about it, they're right to be talking about it because I'm looking at neighboring schools that. You know, used to have you know having you know freshman class sizes of forty when they used to have close to be similar sizes to us. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, you're talking about Turner's and you're yeah. talking about Greenfield that far far smaller than they, they used to be. Um, so the, the, the truth is that is a problem out there. But we, we, we've, we've been to be able, we've been able to escape through mm. moving in and being a vibrant community. And, and I would say I totally I. We moved to Deerfield for the school system, and I've yep. spoken to a lot of people who have kids in the house as well. Yep. So, uh, yep. Good job, Deerfield. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Teachers. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, the, well, um, I just, I mean, if the budget is really a statement of our uh, of priorities, <laughs> and there's so much talk about the need for behavioral kind of health and adjustments and um, and we have a, I mean I obviously yeah we're spending it down but if there's a real need for it isn't that what this cushion is sort of there for um, so I guess it's just something I mean I think we should think about it a little bit more mm -hmm. I, do too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I know people are worried more. that you do it and then you're stuck with it but if in fact it's a, you know an acute need that needs help temporarily and the hope is that I the cohorts aren't and always I think the way to look at it is that we have about seven students that are identified for this program. If one student goes out we're we're yeah, looking at a seventy thousand right. dollar average tuition. So right. you we, spend our money would better be spent here. Yes growing supporting this program. A, yeah. growing the program. Right. But at some point possibly don't gasp we could actually have somebody come in and, and a student come in and we could be receiving a seventy thousand dollar tuition as right. well. I mean so you, mm -hmm. you do have to kind of look at it that That's way. That's true. Yep. There's a holistic approach to it all. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, gasp. <laughs> so I, I I think one of the 
questions that I've kind of had going through this process for the first time is, you know, what is a number that can be presented to the town that's not going to make them cringe? Um, Two six is great. <laughs> <laughs> but no, do we have some flexibility to go up with that to try to meet this other need? There's, it's hard because there's so much um, expense at the town level, too, that we're trying to deal with. And, um, but I, th I think it's worth looking at this specific item and talking that over for the, till the next meeting and seeing what we can do. The budget in the town is kind of just starting to come together as well to see where we're at. And um, do we have a meals bag on all those burritos? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, burritos have been good. good <clears throat> and I, I, I know that the assessment numbers are not out yet either for Frontier. So right. that's something. You've that got, yeah, we have we have nothing from the schools yet, and they were hoping, you know, that I could lend some insight as to where we're at a little bit in the, the next week or so but um, so I was just wondering you're up what if you could give me a um, a number of what you know truly so you think that's a percent a full percent well if it's only going to be part-time it's not going to be a full percent because a full percent is forty nine thousand is that what I said here mm -hmm. or forty eight thousand so okay. we're talking oh, right. about a part-time position <clears throat> okay um, so half percent, three quarter of a percent, I and mean, then you can look at it that way. Okay. It'll definitely put us over three. Mm -hmm. All right. When do, I'm just trying to find on my calendar right now, when are we going in front of the select? Are you guys officially invited? Yeah, I haven't seen the invite yet, but. Um, I haven't seen it here. Um, I'll find out. But it that's our timeline to get a number. Right. The solid number. And I would recommend if the committee wants us to put that back into the budget, you go back with that, you start with that number. I think I would start with that number mm -hmm. to start with. And then, if, you know, see how the rest of the town pulls together uh, with the budget and, you know, look at this one more month and then see where we go from there. I'd rather. But usually, out of this meeting, we have a, usually have a tentative budget yes. that we're going to start showing to the town that this is where we want to come in at. Yep. So, um, and you would fund that out of school choice? Well, no. no that's if it, I mean, I'm sorry to say it like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> St strategically, no. You, we would ask the town to fund it, and then the fallback is it's going to come out of school choice if we are strongly supporting that as something in the school. If you're changing that percentage number, yeah, you're changing. You said that's the amount we're sending to the town to fund. I get that. We lowered that number by adding it more to school choice. That's why I'm saying the right. number, that 2.68 mm -hmm. you know, the two point six eight right now it's on there is adjusted. We added, we took more find, more funds from school choice to get to that number than we did in the previous year. And so that's the important thing to know is that that's been lowered by using school choice. Right. All right. Um, so I'm just wondering about how difference. So you had that in the original budget. Um, so I always question, like, you have it in the original budget, but you, you cut your own budget and then brought it, you cut it yourselves. So I'm just wondering what the thought behind that, what was your plan B? You must have thought, well, we'll get along without it. Well, originally the, the discussion about next year's preschool class happened within the last month, too. I mean, it was one of those ideas, but the final decision was not made about, because we're trying to look at the enrollment numbers before we kind of... Right. You know, yeah. we're trying to see what, the, as early as we can in the budget, I mean, the, <laughs> try to hold off as long as we can into the budget season to see what those enrollment numbers to see if this is what, I mean, it was kind of, so that's the big, that's the biggest drop to the overall budget. Um, but when uh, we came in the first time, what we wanted to come in with was really, if we could have this position, we would like to ask for it. And then when we went back and looked at everything, realized, okay, this, especially with school choice dropping so much. Um, we right. Since the first one, then we were $100,000 less in school choice. Than we, right. So we knew we were going to be down a bit, but we didn't know we were going to be down that far. So, so, yeah. But if you looked at it with caseloads and job descriptions and between the psychologists that we have, school adjustment counselor, part time, if we added a new part time psychologist, you have job descriptions and. So the part time uh, new psychologist would 
either, so yes and no, would either take on the program needs, yeah. because we have enough for that program needs, which would then allow um, our school psychologist and school adjustment counselor to service the rest of the yes. population. Um, or, you know, whatever, if somebody else wanted to take on that program that already knows it, to, to ensure mm -hmm. that way. We have enough needs to go around <laughs> to provide the services. And the intent of school choice is to offer um, something you normally wouldn't offer. I mean, uh, the intent of school choice is depending on the committee who uses school yeah. choice. Is that right? So, yeah. I mean, we had some towns that are not in the, have not used school choice. I don't use the word smart. They have different demands on their budgets and they've used it all up. And right. so we're fighting to keep $70,000 in school choice in order to not be in accidentally yeah. starting off the school in a deficit. Right. Because you got to get the whole, you know, in, in Deerfield, the number would be even larger. I'm talking about, you know, um, a couple hundred less, you're talking about seventy or fifty thousand dollars just in case you have yeah, you know, one small adjustment absolutely. going out and all of a sudden yeah, you know, the kids not coming and that kind of thing. Just and all of a sudden yeah. and all of a sudden you're starting the year off of layoffs. Yeah. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. um, you know, so you know, Deerfield you know, you your kind of your number would probably be about hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you'd have to have right just for fluctuations. Because look at how right. we went down a hundred thousand dollars in one year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you gotta be, you gotta have that kind of as a backup there. So you sure. kind of saying. So yep. what you're saying, what is it used for? It really right. depends on the committee and the needs of the building. In the beginning, it was always the original kind of thing was just buy a few extra things. We'll buy computers with it. You know what I mean? We'll buy the extra things that we can afford. And then slowly, well, also the fact that our school choice numbers were so high, right? That we like, oh, we can offset some of our budget. We can right. take the burden off the percentage increase to the taxpayers. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, you have taxpayers saying. You know, we have all these school choice people right. who aren't they paying, helping uh, us 50, with the bill. Yeah, you know, so you have a, it's a balancing of those kind of it things. It is, out. but <clears throat> you know, using those funds to one to, um, to you know keep keep us from having to lose a child to another program would be. And one consideration is to do half of it on school choice That's and half what I was of it thinking. on general funds, so that it's not it a full bit. And then we try next year to get it all on local budget because it's mm. also not good to continue stacking school choice with salary for okay. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of a program, um, it's almost all salary. School choice. Yeah, yeah we never really buy anything, right? Okay, so. Um, this is sort of a consensus to that last idea sounded like a good one. To yeah, yeah, any other thought? Yeah, okay. Put the pos shoot for the position back in, but not put it all in the town budget. Although, do you think to split that maybe half and half? Yeah, I think that's probably the most reasonable. It. Those schools are going to come higher. Yeah, like yeah, some of it is in the regular budget. Yes. If it's something we say oh, we need, then right. that's where it should be. There, yeah. Yeah. there would be a different call. Yeah. Sorry for our side talk. We're just talking about what exactly half is because a school psychologist is going to have a doctor. It's going to be a different call. Yeah. It's going to be an additional. Right. What about a school adjustment counselor instead of a psychologist? Or um, do you need the testing ability? Defer back to Tina. I would say that our school psychologist is sitting right here would tell you that she's got tons of testing and evaluations that would, um, would appreciate the help. But if it becomes down to a school adjustment counselor or a school psychologist, it's just almost like not the flexibility as just looking what the pool looks like, to be honest. I would say yeah, I would agree. I would try to go. I would, you were talking about the amount of money we're talking about overall. Amount, you know, I don't think it's the, a, huge, the, a huge difference. You know. I think well, so. We can put that together, and you know, you're looking at a number. I'm leaning over to to ask, like, what do we, we, what's our percent? The percentage we want to, we want to out of this meeting have a pretty, yes. pretty if solid. we can. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, you yep. can always have another meeting if you of want. Of course. Uh, we can have a strong. If we have a strong percentage that we can go to the town, the town's going to want that. Mm -hmm. And yep. I know I'm telling you, Trevor, that you know that, but yep. you know, no, it, they're, they're waiting on the biggest they are. impacts on the budget. They so. Are. Um, if we're looking at 
Yeah, if you add 20,000, you guys can add 20,000. We're probably getting it up to about 3%. Okay. 2.9999. <laughs> so the truth is, we can create the exact percentage you want based on how much we do off school choice. So right. it really is, you can say this is the number we want to be at. We want to be at 2.9. And then, you know, the difference will be out of school choice. And then Shelly will do the, the math on, on that. I think that's, I'm comfortable with that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're wearing two hats, sort of, so it's no, a good idea to go 299. Sure. Add in as, yeah, no, I think, add, I mean, add in as I think much of the point four as you can. And because you I'm just worried that, you know, we're saving a percent here or there, half of a percent, and we wind up spending two times that with a child that may need to leave, you know, or be serviced in a different program. When, and then, or we could actually... But that's not the issue. I think the issue right now is just tactically about, I think everybody's saying we would like to look at putting this person back in the budget. So right. The question is just tactically right now for the presentation that the uh, administration has to make to the town. Mm -hmm. Do we want them to go in with a 3.2? Uh, and then not negotiate against ourselves, as like Mary so aptly put it, or do we want to go in at the 299? I think the 299. Or 299. Okay. I just think that you can keep it under three, that's helpful to the town, and then we can advocate why we're doing that and why we're, you know, that we're nervous about spending down this school choice and just kind of keep telling them that, that we're, that this is the well, issue. We are spending down school choice. Yes, we are. Yeah, that's not Say. We need to make yeah. that clear, but yeah. the risk um, otherwise is, is pretty large. Okay. Great. So I think Great. that's clear. And you interrupted your flow, so back to you. If you're yeah. I, I don't have anything else. Okay. Unless something else. Okay. Um, oh, um, the, um, we need to put. Um, we need to hit the school choice budget for some more oh, arts partnership. Oh, the arts partnership, yes. So I will add down. that in there. Okay. <coughs> and the general consensus is about 7,500? Typically use. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, any further discussion then about the budget from anybody? No? And I don't think we're doing any votes on that. Maybe just um, Sorry. quickly as I just oh. run through this stuff, the administrative technology support, um, is that moved from somewhere else, the building tech software license, so at 14,000, it was a new line item, but it was it pulled from a different? Uh, tell me what. That was 20, 2250, COVID. administrative technology and support. Yeah, we just re-coded it. From somewhere from, else. It was yeah. in the 2210 line. Okay. There should be a negative for almost the exact same yep. amount. Um, and that's just because okay. of Desi's system. They changed how things are coded now. Yep. That's for the copiers and um, printers in the building. There's another line that's like that as well. Look at um, fourteen fifty. Fourteen fifty got moved to forty four hundred, so that's not actually a decrease or an increase as well. It's okay. reallocating a salary of one of the the data specialists. Yep. Yeah. Again, they changed where she would be coded from. Okay. And the um, classroom teacher salary is the 106 is the contract. I think that was the increase, the largest increase was. Um, I think we're all in expenditures is 1.5 million, and that was um, 2205. Just I just want to see where it was. Oh, I see. The total was 43 because you had other reductions. Gotcha. Right. Okay.
I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Great. All right, thank you for that presentation. Um, moving on to new business. And should we take them in order? Like you can take them in order unless you want to go to executive session to discuss the settlement. I can give you a kind of a, a synopsis. It's been done, it's my third meeting talking about this, it's been done both ways. One was just to talk about an open session, one wanted to talk about an executive session. So Anybody it's, have it's a strong feeling about that? How you want to do that. But I can, let me just give you the overview and then you can decide. Okay. Sure. You know, so basically, um, the um, negotiation committee at the last meeting um, proposed a one-year settlement. Um, at, the, at the committee meeting, we received a, um, a new way of looking at the, uh, I don't say a new way of looking at it, but a different salary schedule that we thought was there was enough change in it that was going to take several meetings, which would be several months, in order to really look at and go through those changes. And so we, um, we offered a, a one-year settlement agreement, um, and that was accepted by the association. And then we're going to continue to go right back and start looking and doing some work on looking at what was proposed um, um, and kind of work out all the details of it. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of questions about um, what they're proposing. So that's kind of what we're at. So, um, and we're going to build a uh, working group to kind of dive in and look at the numbers of that to make sure it kind of, because the back and forth has got kind of stiff. Yeah, it has. Um, and so I think, it, you know, that kind of thing, we just have conversations about numbers, what these things mean, where the concerns are, what their concerns are, and then try to hopefully get something that is um, molded in a object that both sides can at least start to then go back to the table and talk about. So the, the work group is non-binding, but it's, um, it's trying to get those numbers in asking a lot of questions back and forth where it's not, at the, you know, I guess, the tension that was kind of created within negotiations. Yeah, that'd be great. So anyway, so the teachers have accepted the, the one-year agreement, and so each committee needs to vote um, to accept in the, in the current agreement. I know I sent this out in an email, but the current um, agreement on the table for one year is the increased steps 3 through 13 at 1% and 2% at steps 14 and 20. The steps and such have already been um, given because we're running off the old contract, so steps were already awarded at the, be at the beginning of the year, or not the exact <coughs> beginning of the year, we've done that because we're going to settle it. Okay. I make a motion to um, approve the Union 38 Teachers One Year Settlement Agreement as presented. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 You second. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to uh, we have policies again. Policies, yes. So um, you should have them as part of your packet. So these policies are are very dry, mm -hmm. and um, we have a full reading. So so we, we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. the um, so basically MASC you know, who we work with annually will give us an update on policies that they want us to, either there's laws have been changed or they give strong recommendations to change those policies. Um, they gave a summary sheet that Trevor has right there. I pulled up and I, uh, that kind of does, it's the cliff notes of what the difference are between the two policies. Um, what we didn't do this time was a, in the past, um, Donna had created a kind of the, these are the red lines that have changed these kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because this is the it's mostly legal um, and not kind of created by the community. Um, as I read through them, you'll kind of see what I mean by that. Um, that it's, it's really straightforward. So um, remember, we do a we do a reading and the select will be voted at the next meeting. So. Yep. Um, you can ask me to go into as much detail as I can try to give on some of these policies, um, but as you'll see, they're very blanket. One of the first one is the educational equity policy. Mm -hmm. um, basically, um, it's basically making that the, the goal is to try to meet the needs of all students, and just making a statement on that. Um, you know, and um, and basically, the, the, it breaks down um, that we support. You know, increase, you know. 
getting all students ready to live in a diverse local, national, and global community, um, provide every student with high level quality curriculum, support and other educational resources, providing um, educational equity as a priority of professional development, you know, and so on and so forth. So just a very basic general um, equity policy. Okay. Um, we had one before on staff, I mean on staff, on, on file, it just didn't, didn't, it was kind of a general, mm -hmm. this one kind of was more, a little more specific. Um, the second one <coughs> is, public comments? is which one? Is it public comments? Another equal education. Oh, equal educational, oh. equal educational opportunities. Um, it's kind of an extension of the previous one. Um, I'm going to my own cliff notes here. And to make sure that we are offering um, every effort um, to make all our programs available to all students. So, um, <clears throat> and also to protect the dignity of all students as individuals, we make care, consideration, and sympathetic understanding of their personal feelings, particularly in reference to their race, color, sex, gender identity, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, homeless status, physical and intellectual differences, pregnancy or pregnancy related conditions. So that's kind of following within the law, but mm -hmm. you kind of hear that um, second part there. And so, that is a new policy. Why don't um, I suggest that unless people want you to do this, that since we are being assigned to basically read, the, read, read them, them, that we'll read them, and yep. we will come back at the next meeting and, and vote on them, and sure. ask you very pithy questions at that time. Right. The other ones are actually a lot easier. The homeless student one is just basically, yep. they're, they're updating the one that we actually just did last year, right. or the year prior, and the next one is the military children. They updated that one, okay. and they updated the opportunities for children in foster care. So again, it's making sure that you don't have any policies in place. The, the general gist of them that, that um, works against those students in enrolling or you know, achieving graduation, should their life circumstances change because of those, those issues. So in general, those are, those are even more straightforward. All right. Okay. Sounds good. There are a lot more coming. So there are a total of 30 changes to what they recommended. Okay. We're doing them in sections, um, and hopefully that we can meet out the ones that are not. Some of them are just like one sentence changes, and we try to make sure it's a lot clearer on those. Ones. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on to reports. I don't have a report on Ken's behalf. Carrie, thank you for your email. Yes, thank you. I'm a collaborative and. Uh, principal report. Yep, I have a report. So um, Sue Scott is our amazing adaptive PE teacher, and she organized our first annual K through five Young Athletes Day, which is kind of a spin-off of Special Olympics. So there was laughter, joy, and a sweet smell of victory as students participated and were cheered on by their classmates and family. Um, and this event was capped off with presentation of certificates and awards. The kids worked hard on their variety of gross motor skills, and they were very proud to show off their talents. So big shout out to Sue. Um, and then we finished, uh, or no, we're actually in full swing with our data meetings in grades four through six. Um, grade level teams have fluidly used a variety of data points and resources, if you were mentioned there, to ensure positive student learning outcomes. Um, and our instructional leadership team continues to be working on uh, John Hattie's work and we're really focusing in on 10 mind frames and the um, golden circle, which is kind of looking at the why. So what you're doing, why are you doing it? Um, and in kindergarten, our students are exploring the animal tracks, uh, tracks capturing the ice and snow. That's a great way to launch into the inquiry into what animals, including humans, do to adapt to the winter weather. Um, I clearly go tanning. We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> the grade four field trip to the Peacock Museum um, just happened recently, and the children were able to explore our creative Peacock <coughs> Village. They always loved that field trip. Um, and 6A is in the midst of the acquiring the two water belly filling stations. Um, you know, they've been awarded that Yankee Candle grant. That's great. And, um, 
you know, another funder, it looks like, is going to be helping supply all students and staff who do not have a reusable water bottle with a water bottle. Right. And um, they're building in their journalism unit, so students are really excited about how this fundraiser and this initiative has been. Um, I just interviewed, or just in, I just was interviewed by two of the students in Jillian's class, and it's fun to have that uh, interaction. And, um, well, we have the 100th day of school on Friday because we are only having a two-hour delay tomorrow. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, or the 100th day possibly could be Monday. No pressure, guys. <laughs> What's going on today? Mars. 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 But we didn't have heat. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Mary works there, that's why I have to tell her. She 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 I know. I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I never have to. Do you go to school for that? That's the only one I got. That's the only one. Tech is thinking about it. All right, moving on. Unless anyone has any questions? Bettina? Nope. Uh, Superintendent's report? Anything else? session. Nobody wants to go there. Uh, we can adjourn it. We all agree. Make that motion. All right. Second it. Thank you all. Thank you.